Uh, so, you know, we cover solar energy and clean tech obsessively, and what we see the biggest barrier to the growth of these markets is really just awareness, both among the general public and among governments. Uh, it seems like that's your key, your key aim lately is to bring wider awareness to to this to this technology. Can you talk a little bit about about that, your your marketing efforts on that on that side, and just what you? Yeah. Well, the awareness is very important because we want to make sure that people know first of all the opportunities it brings to Africa for this clean energy technology because Africa is not a ground where everything that's been tried in different pla places in the world when it comes to energy and th that didn't work out. We can now use Africa as a laboratory to start new things. Um, uh, but a lot of people don't understand it that way so now it's our role to make sure people are aware of the possibilities and opportunities. I'll give you an example for now. For example, the um, telecom business, when it started, um, the way it boomed in Africa didn't mean anywhere else like that. Uh, for example, if you go to Kenya with Mampetsa and all those things, the mobile telephone, mobile uh, payments and such things, many African families don't have today or never had a landline. A landline. They had to skip it, right? I remember when I first went to America in 2000, when I called my family, is the whole neighborhood is only one house that have a telephone line. It was just in 2000. You had to call that house and wait for one hour for them to go call mom. He can, she comes and talks to you. And everybody in the neighborhood would do the same thing. My house, my father's house, mom and them, they never had a landline. So two years later, three years later, everybody had a cell phone all the way to farthest villages in Africa you go, people have one, two, two, three t telephones, and they're doing banking on that. And I see an opportunity here in, when it comes to energy also is, that's going to happen. It's already happening in Africa, where people who are off-grid but using solar, mm -hmm. and using solar to charge their phone, to charge their computers, to run their refrigerators with the mini-grids, and also do everything that people would grids are doing in the US or in Europe so but the first thing is to raise awareness this is why we do it. so yeah what do you see as the biggest barriers entering these markets is it is it awareness is it government uh, bottlenecks is it uh, just getting a business into these I think it's, it's, it's getting people from the the, the, the the status quo moving them from the status quo to what's possible change is never easy change is never but you yeah, mean like psychologically? Process. like Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot of these things, but I think it's just it's the changes. You know, it takes time for people to get it that, you know, we can come from the greed to create opportunities with solar that never run out in Africa. But once they get it, it's easy, you know. It's, but just to convince them that this is a possibility, that it can work, is the hardest thing. And also they're used to so many people coming and telling them stuff they don't come up with or they don't do in the end, you know. So. We understand the, the sometimes the resilience. Why why is it there? And I was it was interesting to hear that you're expanding into Brazil and India. Uh, obviously, these are really attractive markets. But why why so soon are you expanding beyond well, Africa? Those are plans, you know. Those are plans. But the main focus now in Africa. We got first of all, we got a lot of work to do in Africa. We're not done yet. You know, we're only in 15 countries. Africa got so many countries that, and all of them need more than 50 countries and they all need energy so it's been a big enough of a market to um, to do what we want to do but the need is also elsewhere and we, we're getting calls to for Brazil and India and we went to Brazil for a visit to, to see what we can do in India also but um, those are future plans for okay. today's focus okay. is in Africa well I mean uh, I think it was four years ago the CNBC interviewed me about about this topic and when I and I talked about the potential to leapfrog from no grid to distributed energy from solar yes just like you did just like you leapfrog from no telephones to cell phones that's true so the opportunity is still right. there yeah. but I'm so I'm honestly shocked that four years later or whatever there's still people thinking that they need the grid that the grid is the future that the grid is around the corner it's not you know so I, I don't know. It, it's great to see you bringing more awareness to this, but do you yeah. still have to do you still have to battle the idea that people think it's a like it's a donation rather than a competitive Listen, I mean, product? It's always yeah, of course. It's, it's always going to be the no sayers. 
when you're c coming up with new innovation and new things, right? And um, yeah, that's true. Until they see it, they don't believe it, right? Yeah. When we started, people thought it was a joke. Yeah. You know, with Akon and them doing on to energy, they don't know energy, right? Yeah. But then, you know, you keep pushing, and then they see the result, and things will change. And you, go ahead. So, and I mean, so many stars they have the the urge to help the world, and they put some money into something, but. I mean, it seems like Akon really is involved. Is he, how how can you can you talk a little bit about how he's involved with you on the business side of this? I mean, he's very involved. This is not a, something we do just to, you know, what I'm saying to for fame for the or donation. As you said earlier, this is a social entrepreneurship. It's a business, and the business requires your time. It requires your attention. It requires a lot of uh, sacrifices, and that's what we've been doing. Means when it comes to time, we we are very busy separately to our own things. I got my own business and foundation on this also and a couple of businesses and Akon is very busy as you know in his music but he's, the, he's here, he's always present. That says a lot, that says that there's sacrifices and he's not the, giving his name just to something, he's more involved in which.